Fox Medical. Sponsored locally by Regents Blue Shield. Welcome back, 722. So a new government study is focusing on helping to really define what long COVID is. The research is part of the National Institute of Health's Billion Dollar Recovery Research Initiative that aims to define long COVID, really understand what causes the condition, and then hopefully develop some treatments for it. Researchers recently released those findings, and to go over those findings, we're joined by Fox Medical Team's Dr. Mike with us this morning. Doctor, good to have you. <laughs> Always a pleasure, Liz. You just have so much energy and positivity. I feel better already. Oh, that's that You're great. Me, that made my morning. Thank you. Uh, okay, so let's talk about long uh, COVID. I mean, right. we could go back and forth all day. Uh, but this government study just found 12 symptoms classify long COVID. What are some of those symptoms? I mean, what do you have to have to be considered long COVID? Well, one of them is... Um, buzzing in your ear no that? that's not true they're working on the ceiling they're oh, working upstairs <laughs> uh drilling okay. yes thank yeah, you for the transparency uh, it, i'm going am it, i losing my mind yeah no it's not your tv it it's me it's not you it's me all right so anyway if you can work through this fatigue brain fog dizziness gi symptoms loss of taste and smell for months and months and months mm -hmm. after you had COVID, uh, and that's what we call long haulers or long COVID. One in 10 people that had the Omicron virus developed it. Now, interestingly, hopefully all of you got vaccinated because those who were vaccinated had a much lower incidence and less severe symptoms of long COVID, but it's real. And we know for a fact that viruses can lead to long-term uh, problems in the body. It's uh, thought, a lot of theories out there, perhaps an inflammatory response to the virus, maybe an autoimmune response. But the bottom line is it's real and people are feverishly, no pun intended, trying to find out what it is and how to treat it. Yeah, and that's my other question. I mean, you're talking about these long-term symptoms. You just mentioned maybe an inflammatory response or an autoimmune response. <coughs> do, do scientists have any idea what the even longer-term impacts of this could be down the line? Well, it's, it's one big experiment. We don't know. Uh, we, this is a virus that led to a pandemic. It's a, it was a novel virus. And so there's a lot to learn about it. It's a bad one. Uh, and uh, now it has luckily become endemic. So it's, it's more of a chronic nuisance than anything else. Uh, look, I, I was dealing with this from the very beginning and people were dying all over the place. So look, if there are some long-term effects, uh, we're gonna try to figure it out and get to the bottom of it and come up with some salient points to help people uh, with treatment. But right now it's one big laboratory. We're trying to figure it out. Wow, yeah. So as we learn more, I guess like, we're all living through it in real time, just like we did with COVID. Dr. Mike, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. You're the best, Liz. You rock. Thank you. So do you. It's great talking with you. <laughs> it's great talking with you. We appreciate you. <laughs>